Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. How blessed I am that almost every night out of the year, every day out of the year, I'm able to travel, go different places, and preach the gospel. And I cannot tell you the number of messages that I've preached from the pulpit just over my shoulder right here in this sanctuary and the glory of God's come down and fill this mighty, mighty church. And as we travel to see God do the same in churches all across the country and to see what He's doing through this ministry now around the world. And I want to pause right at the very beginning to thank you for praying for us. We need your prayers because I understand I just do not have sermons that's got enough of an outline to them or illustrations that's good enough. It takes the unction and power of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for praying for us. And we do our best to try to share uh, from revivals, crusades, camp meetings, some of the great services God allows us to be in. We share them with you week after week right here over this station. And again, it's because you pray and I thank you for that. And speaking of prayer, let's go to the Lord together right now and pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity that is ours once again today to lift you up. Because if you are lifted up from the earth, you said you'll draw all men unto you. I ask, Lord, that you'll direct every song by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the songs can touch the hearts of those that are tuned in the program today. I pray, Lord, for our dear, dear preacher friends, Many of them will even be taking to the pulpit today to share the message of Christ, but yet they've paused for a few moments to give us their time. And Lord, they pray for us regularly, and I pray for them that you'll bless them, their church, their people, because we are all saved through the precious blood of Christ, and we're part of the family of God that's to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to this lost world. Lord, I pray for the shut-in friends as well that need healing and help and strength Many of them are facing tremendous battles, and I pray that you'll comfort them by your presence and power today. Lord, I know that there is no substitute for your church, no substitute for the local church, but I pray this day that you'll allow this ministry to maybe feel just a small part of the deep void in the hearts of people that's not able to attend church. They want to, but they can't be there today. So Lord, may the Spirit of the living God touch the message and touch the music that their heart will be challenged and encouraged. Thank you, Lord, for the souls we're seeing saved. We give you glory and praise for all of it. And thank you for the privilege to share the message of Christ today. Bless the program now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's start things off with this number in song. I have built my life on the solid rock far away. From the sinking sand, and I cast my eyes to the home that waits on the banks of the promised land. There's a song of praise that is lifted there by the saints and the angels. To join the choir on the banks of the
Jesus knows and He understands. And they'll be washed away as I cross that stream to the banks of the promised land. Hallelujah, what a morning when I reach for that nail star bed. And I went from grace to glory on the banks of the promised land. And what a day that's going to be. Then I'll see the face of my Savior.
this is such a special week for Brian and I. We are privileged to be two of the three evangelists that will be preaching this year at the Christian Baptist Camp Meeting in Wheelersburg, Ohio. My, what a beautiful campground they have there. How we appreciate their general superintendent, Paul Hagan, and the board there and all the fine folks that have invited us to come and share in the services all week long. Their services actually start tonight. Brian and I will be joining them on tomorrow night if you're tuned in on Sunday. We're on Sunday night right on down through Friday night and they have three big services a day at 10 a.m., again at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Brian and I, along with Raymond Lewis, will be sharing the pulpit and we're on a revolving preaching schedule, a rotating schedule, and we'd love for you to come and enjoy the warm welcome and worship of the fine folks there in the Christian Baptist Association. Jot it down, plan on being there all week long. It's right downtown Wheelersburg, Ohio on Old Gallia Pike, and we just look forward to the presence of God filling the mighty tabernacle there. It'll be like going back years in time as the folks gather in and worship together there in the beautiful tabernacle on the Christian Baptist campgrounds. So come and attend the services as much as you possibly can this week. We look forward to seeing hundreds of our friends down through the week and thank you in advance for praying for us. We need your prayers as we go out week after week to share the good news of Christ. And thank you for rallying to the cause of this ministry. Those of you that bless us time and time again by supporting us and praying for us and your faithfulness. We do love you and appreciate you so much. I hope you'll pray about becoming a partner of this ministry. If you're not helping us already, we need more churches to get involved in our missions outreach. We need individuals that'll say, I want to be a part of the radio and television ministry. I want to be a part of your missions outreach. I want to be a blessing to people that stand in need right here in America. Send the best gift you can today. Our mailing address is Calvin Evans, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662. Or you can call us toll free, 800-767-8713. Or you can visit us on the World Wide Web at Calvin Evans. Dot .org and we look forward to hearing from you this week. Don't forget to request the free gift offer when you contact us as well. God has used these gift offers in a supernatural way to touch lives. And I believe you'll be blessed by this month's gift offer. It's absolutely free. Just mention it when you're right. And you know, I hope by now you're on our mailing list. If you're not on our mailing list, let me encourage you to do that when you contact us. It's totally free. We send out messages regularly and God has certainly blessed many, many people over the years to take those messages and share them with unsaved loved ones, share them in their services as well. And we thank the Lord for friends that pray for us and will reach out together with us. So if you're not on our free mailing list, be sure to request that too when you contact us. God's been good to us and we praise Him for all of it. And we thank the Lord for you today. Well, right now, let's join the message today that's in progress. The book of Romans can really be divided into two different categories. Paul is trying to teach them a practical doctrine, but then he uses those practical doctrines to teach them to live a holy and acceptable life pleasing unto God. The first 11 chapters he deals with one specific subject, and that's the subject of justification. And in Romans chapter five, you'll find my text verse for tonight. Romans chapter five, and we'll read verses one and two. Romans chapter five and read verses one and two. He's writing to the church at Rome and undoubtedly they are having problems with their past. They're, they're listening to the lies that Satan feeds them. And so he deals with 11 chapters on being justified. And then in chapter five and verse one, he says this, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Somebody say this grace. Say it again, this grace, this grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
Paul wanted them to live and to walk in victory. And that's my challenge for us tonight here at Spring Jubilee. I want us to stop believing and stop listening to Satan's lie because thank God when we are forgiven, we are forgiven. We don't have to walk around with our head hanging down. If we've been justified by the precious blood of Christ, hallelujah, we can have victory in our soul. We can know that we're saved and also enjoy the fact that we are saved and on our way to heaven. Well, I know there's a uh, definition that's gone around for many years or what the word justification means and simply it means this, just as if I had never sinned and that's a great definition and I've said it many times but I've got my own definition that I'd like to share with you tonight that comes in two different parts. After studying on justification and after realizing what it really means I got a greater appreciation of the power of the blood of Christ. Number one, the first part of the definition is this, God forgives us of all our sin. Somebody say amen right there. We are no longer an orphan. When the blood of Christ comes down, he forgives us of all our sin. Regardless if you're five years old, regardless if you're 99 years old or 100 years old, it don't matter how many sins you have committed. Thank God, one drop of the precious blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. The book of Hebrews tells us, now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But in the second, when the high priest alone, not without blood, which he offered up for himself and for the sins of the people, but Christ being come a high priest of greater things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither with the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, entered once, entered once, entered once, entered once, entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us all. Thank God, aren't you glad he cleanses us from all sin? That's one half. Here's the second half. First of all, he cleanses us from all sin. But secondly, after we're forgiven, he treats us as if we never committed them in the first place. (laughs) Now I'm gonna let you just hang on to that one second and really start to think what that really means. To think about that. To think about that being justified means he forgives you of every sin you've committed. But then after he forgives you, he forgets them and he never lays them again against you. Thank God. It's as if you never committed the sin in the first place. So why do you let the devil bring up your stinking rotten past? Thank God when you're justified, it's forgiven, it's forgotten. And we should walk around victorious. Because we're justified. He wiped the slate clean and he no longer remembers them. But he treats us as if we never did them in the first place. But there is a problem. There's a problem. And this is where the Romans were at and this is where we're at today. God forgets them. God treats us like we never sinned. But we still have a memory. And I'm convinced there are people that hold doctorate degrees on bringing up your past. Not only do you remember what you did, but everybody else remembers the scoundrel you used to be. Everybody remembers when you were a drunk. Everybody remembers when you were a drug addict. Everybody remembers when you were running around on your wife. Everybody remembers when you were a dirty, rotten old sinner. Everybody remembers when you were a cusser. Everybody remembers when you used to sin. And they'll bring up every sin you've ever committed. All that they can remember, they'll bring them up. But listen, that's why we have to stop listening to other people and stop listening to the devil and even stop listening to ourselves. Because when we're justified, God, the one that forgives us, forgets it, wipes the slate clean, and never remembers them again. It's hard for us to understand because we can't forgive ourselves. But may I remind you, you can't forgive yourself. I'll just reiterate that. You can't. You do not have the power to forgive one sin you committed. That's why we have to stop listening and stop believing 
on the power of being justified. So what are some of the blessings that come with being justified? It's found here in these verses. Number one, it's simply this. Therefore, in being justified by faith, we have peace with God. That's point number one. When we're justified, we have peace with God. When Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, starts to rule and reign in your life, you have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe to thank the one that formed the moon and stars, that formed this grand earth, and now he lives in our heart. You have a personal one-on-one relationship with him, and not only do you have a personal relationship, you have peace with him. Preachers, if I can give you some some advice and those that are young in the ministry and those that maybe do not do this, a great great source to have with you along with your Bible is a good dictionary. A good dictionary, a good old Webster's Dictionary. And the definition of the word peace in the Webster's Dictionary simply means this, the state of mutual harmony between people or groups. And when you think about the peace with God, and having mutual harmony between you and God, that brings a greater definition to what having peace really means. It means that you're in tune with him, and he's in tune with you. Let me share with you this illustration that I learned a long time ago. If you have a piano that has strings on it, you actually have two pianos that have strings, and you have them in the same room. You can go to one piano, and you can hit a middle C, and just start playing that note over and over and over and over again. If the other piano in the room is in tune with the piano that you are playing, every C, not just middle C, but every C on that piano will begin to vibrate. You know why? Because they're in tune with one another. <laughs> and my dad, I told my dad this illustration, and he was quick to remind me he's played the piano for as long as he's about lived, and so almost 60 years probably he's played the piano. He reminded me in order to get that to happen, you have to push the sustain pedal. You have to remove all hindrances. You have to get rid of all the stops in order for there to be... <laughs> mm. Woo, in order for there to be mutual harmony in between the pianos. So think of it tonight. If we're in tune with God and he's in tune with us, if he begins to play a note, then we'll feel it on the inside. Hey, if you're in tune with God and I'm in tune with God, when you start shouting, it'll do something on the inside here. That's what having peace with God is all about. When he speaks, we hear it. When he says move, we move. When he says shout, we shout. It's having peace with God because we are justified. Hallelujah. Peace with God. Not only do we have that, but we also have power with God. The power comes in verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into, and I told you to say it, this grace. Say this grace. This grace, this grace. We all know what grace means. The grace has been tried to be explained and songs have been written about it, but yet no one has ever been properly able to adequately define what grace really means. You can't really explain it. You just have to experience it, don't you? Some people say that grace is the unmerited favor of God. And yes, that's a great definition. But if you look in the Old Testament, the Bible says when you speak to the mountain, shout grace to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. So that tells me that grace not only is the unmerited favor of God, but it is the unleashed power of God. Because what else could lift you from the miry clay and set your feet on a solid rock to stay? That is the amazing grace of an almighty God. It was grace that has brought you to this place and it is grace that will bring you home and you can have grace tonight by being justified. And grace, I found, comes in many different forms and many different types because whatever situation you're in, God has the grace 
just for you. <laughs> Thank God there is electing grace. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world began. Thank God there's regenerating grace. Ezekiel 36.26 says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Thank God there's converting grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's adopting grace. Ephesians 1, 4 says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love to the praise and the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Thank God there is sanctifying grace. Romans 6, 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but you're under grace. Hallelujah. Thank God there's provisional grace. James 1, 17 says every good gift and every perfect gift is from the Father above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. There's empowering grace. 1 Corinthians 15, 10 says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain. Hallelujah, I'm preaching a lot better than you're shouting tonight. There's persevering grace. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath God begun a good work in you shall perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's glorifying grace. Romans 8 30 says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Thank God finally there is justifying grace. For Romans 3, 23 and 24 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, whatever you need, God has the grace. Woo! Glory to God. Woo! Feels good up here tonight. Thank God for grace. Where would we be without grace? We're all a bunch of spoiled brats. I guess you all take for granted what the grace of God really means. But without the grace of God, I couldn't make it every day. I couldn't wake up in the morning. Without his grace, I couldn't take a step. Without his grace, I couldn't take a breath. Without his grace, I couldn't love my family. Without his grace, I couldn't preach his word. Without his grace, I couldn't testify. Without his grace, I wouldn't make it to heaven. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.